Hello everybody, Kyle here from Web Dev Simplified. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the commonly used pattern called the builder pattern, which is incredibly useful when you need to create objects that have many interlinking parts or many optional and required fields. So let's get started now. As I mentioned earlier, this pattern is useful when you need to create objects that have many different working parts that need to all come together to create one single object. In our example here, we have two classes, an address class and a user class, and the user is the object that we want to create dynamically using a builder. So this user, it can have a name, an age, a phone number, and an address, and this address can have a zip code and a street. Now you can imagine that this user object could be much more complex. It could have emails, it could have passwords, authentication tokens, address could be more complex with like state, country, all that extra stuff. So this is a really dumbed down version of what you could be using the builder for, but it's great for showing you why the builder could be useful. In our example here, we have a user and really the only field that needs to be supplied is name. Age, phone number, and address are all really optional fields that the user can or may not have. So if I run this real quick, You'll see that we get a user printed out with the name of Bob and their address, age, and phone are all undefined, which is perfect. That's an incredibly acceptable value for a user. But let's say we want to add an address to our user, but we don't want to add an age or a phone number. Well, now we need to go into this user object. We need to pass in undefined both times here for the age. And then again, we need to pass in undefined for the phone. And then finally, we can create a new address object. And let's just say we want to give it a zip of one in a street of Maine. So now if we save that, you'll see that we get this user printed out and they have an address with a zip of one and a street of Maine and the age and phone number undefined. But this is kind of complex. This is really not very self-explanatory. If all you saw was this new user line, you don't know what undefined is setting. You don't know that this is the age or that this is the phone number. So it's incredibly confusing to figure out what you're actually setting. And you always have to write out these undefines and make sure everything's in the correct order in order to get this to work properly. And if you can imagine you have 20 parameters to create a new user, this new user statement can become incredibly long and filled with many different undefined that are confusing to you, the programmer, as to what they actually mean. And that's where the builder comes in. Now there's two ways to do the builder. There's the traditional way to create the builder, which I'm going to cover first. And then there's another way, which is very much more JavaScript focused, which I think is more advanced and cleaner looking and much better for JavaScript. So make sure you stick around till the second part the end of the video where I cover that JavaScript specific way. But for now, I'm going to cover first just the original way of doing this, which is still completely valid in JavaScript. So let's remove this user section down here. And we need to create another class, which is going to be our builder. We're just going to call this class user builder. And this user builder is going to take all of the required parameters to create a user. In our case, just the name is the only parameter that we actually need to use to create a user. So we have a constructor that takes a name and what this is going to do, it's going to set user equal to a new user. And we're just going to pass that name parameter in there. So all we're doing here is creating a user with the name that we need. And we can actually remove all these extra parameters from this constructor up here for the user, since we're only ever going to pass it the name with this builder. And you're never actually going to use this user class to create users. You're always going to use the builder down here. So now what we need to do is actually create methods so we can set the age address and the phone number of the user. So all we need to do is just come down here, create a method, we'll just call it set age. It's going to take an age and all it's going to do is set the user's age. So we'll just say this.user.age is equal to the age. And then at the end, we just want to return this, which is just returning the builder back. This will allow us to chain these methods together, which you'll see when we start creating users. So again, we can just kind of copy this and paste it back down. And we're going to do the phone, for example, so set phone, it's going to take phone here and it's going to set user phone to phone and again, return the builder object. And then finally, we're going to have an address one, which is going to take an address. And do we finish pasting that all down? There we go. Now we've created the builder for our user and we can actually use the builder. But first we need to create a build method on this in order to create the user and return it. So we'll just have a method here called build. It'll take absolutely nothing and it'll just return that user object so that we can actually use the user object instead of having to use the builder. So now we can come down here. We can say our builder is going to be equal to a new user builder. We pass it the name we want, for example, Bob. And now we can just leave it at this and call dot build. 
And now we're going to actually have a builder. So let's change this here to user. And if we just log out that user, you'll see that we get a user that has the name of Bob, which is perfect. That's exactly what we expected. And none of the other fields are set. But what if we wanted to add those extra fields? We could just say dot set age, for example, pass it in an age of 10. And if we say that, we now see that we get an age of 10 and the name of Bob. And the reason that we can just completely chain these together after each other is because we always are returning the same object back at the end of each of these set statements. If we didn't do this, we would need to put these all in a new line instead of being able to chain them together. So this just is an easier way to write out these statements. We can do the same thing for the phone number, for example. So let's say we want to set the phone. We're just going to set it to a few ones. If we say that, you now see the phone number is also being inputted in there. We can do the same thing for address. And this allows you to dynamically create these objects however you want to without having to specify undefined for all the optional parameters that you don't actually want. It also gives you a nice clean interface for setting the different properties of a user, which makes it much easier to see what's going on in the code when you're reading it. And this is the traditional way of creating a builder. But it's not the only way to use a builder, and JavaScript actually has a really nice way to implement builders for more simple objects in the case of this user, for example. So let's open that up right now. We can get started by completely removing this builder class because we're no longer actually going to need it. And all we're going to do is actually make changes to the user class itself. So as we know, we have this name parameter which is going to be required, and we have a bunch of other parameters, the phone number, the age, and the address, which are optional. And an easy way to create optional parameters in JavaScript is to pass them as a JSON object or a JavaScript object at the very end. A lot of times this will be labeled as options, for example. But with the newer features of JavaScript, we're able to actually specify names for these different parameters rather than just pass them all in one JavaScript object. So we can just create a JavaScript object of sorts inside of here by creating two curly braces. And we just want to put the parameters that we want. For example, we want to have age, we want to have phone, and we want to have address. And this will say that our last parameter, which is going to be a JavaScript object, is going to have the keys of age, phone, and address inside of it. It may or may not have them, but if it doesn't have them, it'll just default them to undefined, which is exactly what we want. And then in the case we don't pass any of these, we need to just default this to an empty JavaScript object. And this just says, if we only pass a name and nothing else, just pretend that we passed in just an empty JavaScript object as the second parameter instead of nothing. And then we just need to use these. So we just say this.age equals age. And this works just like we did before when we actually passed the parameters. But instead, now they're completely optional and they're going to be key value paired. So they're easier to see in the programming language. So let's just finish this up with address. And now let's talk about how we can actually use this user object. So we can just say, user is going to equal a new user and we want to pass that name so in our case we'll use bob again and then we just pass a javascript object with the different keys that we want so let's say we want to give it an age we'll just say age of 10 and if we save that or and we print it here so console.log user and we print that you'll see that we get a name of bob an age of 10 and the address and phone are undefined and that's because we actually passed this key of age which is defined up here in our constructor as age, and it saves it to the user. We can also add in address, for example, in here. We can just pass in a new address, and we'll just give it a zip of one again, and a street of main. And if you save that, you see that our address is also set with the correct zip and street. And we can even do the same thing with phone if we really wanted to. So we can just pass a phone number in there and save it, and you see that the phone number is also being passed. And the great thing about doing our constructor this way is we can use default values for these different optional parameters if we want. So for example, if we remove phone here, resave it, you'll see that we get undefined for our phone number. But let's say we want to default all the phone numbers to be 123456789. Now if we save that, you'll see that it is changing the phone number to 123456789 if we don't pass it. But if we do pass the phone number, so for example, if we make the phone number just a bunch of ones and save it, you'll see that it sets the phone number to a bunch of ones. So this is really convenient when we want to create these optional parameters, but sometimes we may want to have default values for them. So it's incredibly useful for that certain scenario. And when you have a simple builder, such as this user builder, it's much easier 
to create a constructor like this. It takes up much less code. And I think that the code that you actually write to create the object is just as clean as the actual builder implementation. The only time a builder is actually better than this is if you have an incredibly complex object that has many, many moving parts to it. And in that case, using a builder instead of a constructor would be beneficial since it allows you to break out that complex logic from the constructor and put it inside of the builder object. And that's all there is to creating a builder in JavaScript. I hope you guys learned something about how to create a builder and why it'll be useful in your code to use these builders to clean up your complex constructors and object creations. If you guys did enjoy this video, please make sure to check out my other design pattern videos linked over here and subscribe to my channel for more videos just like this in the future. Thank you guys very much for watching and have a good day.